you should be able to define and illustrate geometric sequence. Identify common ratio, first term, and last term of geometric sequence. Differentiate between finite and infinite geometric sequence. Find the end term of a geometric sequence. And differentiate between arithmetic sequence and geometric sequence. Let's get started. Let us try to observe the given pattern. Imagine you have a secret. You tell three friends, who each tell three friends, who then tell another three friends. The numerical representation of this figure is 1, 3, 9, 27. And this is an example of geometric sequence. Geometric sequence is also known as geometric progression. By definition, it is a sequence where every term is multiplied by a non-zero constant number to get the next term. This non-zero constant number is what we call the common ratio. It is denoted by small letter r. Geometric progression can be classified as finite geometric sequence or infinite geometric sequence. Let's have some examples. We will determine which of the following sequences are geometric sequence and not geometric sequence. Example number one. The sequence is 5, 20, 80, 320, and the pattern continues. To identify if this is an example of geometric sequence, let's determine the common ratio. The common ratio is obtained by getting the quotient of two consecutive terms. So we have a sub 2 divided by a sub 1, a sub 3 divided by a sub 2, a sub 4 divided by a sub 3, and the pattern continues. Let's substitute the given values. So we have 20 divided by 5. 20 divided by 5 is 4. We also have 80 divided by 20, and that is also 4. Then, we have 320 divided by 80, and the quotient is 4. Since the ratio in each consecutive terms are the same, therefore, we have a common ratio of 4. In symbol, we have r is equal to 4. Since we have a common ratio, Therefore, this is an example of geometric sequence. If you can see, the pattern is continuous. Therefore, this is an example of infinite geometric sequence. Example number 2. The sequence is 4, 8, 16, 48. We will determine if this is an example of geometric sequence. Let's identify the common ratio. The common ratio can be obtained by getting the quotient of two consecutive terms. We have a sub 2 divided by a sub 1, a sub 3 divided by a sub 2, and a sub 4 divided by a sub 3. So we have 8 divided by 4. 8 divided by 4 is equal to 2. Then we also have 16 divided by 8, which is equal to 2. Lastly, we have 48 divided by 16 and the quotient is 3. Therefore, we can say that we don't have any common ratio. That means that this is not a geometric sequence. Example number 3. The sequence is negative 250, 50, negative 10, 2. We will determine if this is an example of geometric sequence by identifying the common ratio. The common ratio is obtained by getting the quotient of two consecutive terms. So we have a sub 2 all over a sub 1, a sub 3 all over a sub 2, and a sub 4 divided by a sub 3. By substitution, we have 50 divided by negative 250. And that is equal to negative one-fifth. 
we also have negative 10 all over 50 or negative 10 divided by 50 is equal to negative 1 fifth. Lastly, we have 2 all over negative 10. 2 divided by negative 10 is equal to negative 1 fifth. Therefore, the common ratio is negative 1 fifth. Since we have a common ratio, that means that this is an example of geometric sequence. In symbol, we have r is equal to negative 1 fifth. You can also determine the last term in the sequence, which is 2. Thus, we can say that this is an example of finite geometric sequence. After solving for the common ratio, we can conclude that example number 1, 5, 20, 80, 320, and the pattern continues is an example of infinite geometric sequence, wherein the number of terms is infinitely many. You can easily identify the first term, which is 5, and we don't have any last term. For example number 2, 4, 8, 16, 33, we can conclude that this is not a geometric sequence since we don't have any common ratio. For example number 3, negative 250, 50, negative 10, 2, this is an example of finite geometric sequence wherein the number of terms is 4. And the first term is negative 250, while the last term is equal to 2. Let us learn more about geometric sequence. If the common ratio of the geometric sequence is negative 3 and the first term is 6, what are the 5 terms of the sequence? We can draw 5 squares corresponding in each terms since we're looking for the first 5 terms, which are a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4, and a sub 5. The first term is 6, so we can substitute a sub 1 by 6. Also, the common ratio of the geometric sequence is negative 3. So in symbol, we have r is equal to negative 3. That means that we can multiply negative 3 in each term to get the next term. So we have 6 times negative 3 is equal to a sub 2, which is negative 18. To find a sub 3, we will multiply negative 18 by negative 3. Negative 18 times negative 3 is 54. To find a sub 4, we will multiply 54 by negative 3. 54 times negative 3 is equal to negative 162. To find a sub 5, we will multiply negative 162 by negative 3. Negative 162 times negative 3 is positive 486. Therefore, the first 5 terms of the sequence is 6, negative 18, 54, negative 162, and 486. Let's have another example. 3, 6, 12, 24, 48, and the pattern continues. This is an example of infinite geometric sequence since we don't have any last term. We can easily identify the common ratio, which is 2, since we multiply 2 in each term to get the next term. Or in symbol, we have r is equal to 2. Also, we can identify the first term or a sub 1 which is 3. The second term or a sub 2 is 6. The third term is 12. The fourth term is 24. And the fifth term is 48. What about if we want to find the 15th term or a sub 15? Are we going to list all the first 15 terms just to find out what is the 15th term is? The answer is no. We're going to use the formula 
for geometric sequence. The formula for geometric sequence is a sub n is equal to a sub 1 times r raised to quantity n minus 1. This is the formula that we're going to use to solve for the 15th term. Since we already have the formula for geometric sequence, we can now solve the given example. We are tasked to find the 15th term in the given geometric sequence. So we have a sub 15 is equal to unknown. The given are a sub 1 is equal to 3, n is equal to 15, since we're looking for the 15th term, and r is equal to 2, since we multiply 2 in each term to get the next term. The first step is to write the formula. a sub n is equal to a sub 1 times r raised to n minus 1. Next is substitution. a sub n is equal to a sub 15. Equal a sub 1, which is 3 times r which is 2 raised to quantity n which is 15 minus 1. After substitution, we can now solve using the PEMDAS rule. Start with the parentheses. 15 minus 1 is equal to 14. So the resulting equation is a sub 15 is equal to 3 times 2 raised to 14. Next is to solve the exponent. So we have 2 raised to 14 is equal to 16,384. So we have a sub 15 is equal to 3 times 16,384. For the last step, we will multiply 3 by 16,384 and the answer is 49,152. That is the 15th term in the sequence. Let's have another example. Find the 10th term of the geometric sequence 729, 243, 81, 27, 9, and the pattern continues. Since we're looking for the 10th term, then a sub 10 is unknown. We can easily identify the first term, which is 729 n is equal to 10 since we're looking for the 10th term and r is equal to one third since we multiply one third in each term to get the next term or we divide 3 in each term to get the next term or also r is equal to the second term 243 divided by the first term 729 243 divided by 729 is equal to one third. That's why the common ratio is one third. After identifying the given values, we can now write the formula for geometric sequence. That is a sub n is equal to a sub 1 times r raised to quantity n minus 1. After writing the formula, we can now substitute the given values a sub n is equal to a sub 10 is equal to the first term is which is 729 times r which is one third raised to n which is 10 minus 1 after substitution we can now solve let's start inside the parentheses 10 minus 1 is equal to 9 that's why the resulting equation is a sub 10 is equal to 729 times 1 third raised to 9. Then we can simplify 1 third raised to 9. And that is equal to 1 over 19,683. The resulting equation is a sub 10 is equal to 729 times 1 all over 19,683. We can simplify this. <laughs> so we have 729 over 19,683. Since 729 times 1 is equal to 729. 
divide 729 by 19,683 and the result is 1 over 27. That's why the ten term in the geometric sequence or a sub 10 is equal to 1 over 27. Since arithmetic sequence and geometric sequence were discussed, we can now differentiate the two using Venn diagram. Arithmetic sequence example is 2, 5, 8, 11, where you add 3 in each term to get the next term. This constant number that you add in each term to get the next term is what we call the common difference, denoted by D. For geometric sequence, the example is 2, 4, 8, 16, where you multiply 2 in each term to get the next term. This constant number that you multiply in each term to get the next term is what we call the common ratio, denoted by R. For arithmetic sequence, we usually use addition, and for geometric sequence, we usually use multiplication. Arithmetic sequence can be classified as finite or infinite. For example, a finite arithmetic sequence is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, wherein 10 is the last term, and we have 5 number of terms. Infinite arithmetic sequence example is 2, 4, 6, 8, and the pattern continues. You can notice that we don't have any last term. For geometric sequence, it can be finite or infinite. Example of finite geometric sequence is 1,250, 50, 10. The number of terms is 4 and the last term is 10. Example of infinite geometric sequence is 1,250, 50, and the pattern continues. You can notice that we don't have any last term. Lastly, the formula that we're going to use for arithmetic sequence is a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus quantity n minus 1 times t. And for geometric sequence, we have a sub n is equal to a sub 1 times r raised to n minus 1. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope that you learned something today. Please consider like and share this video to your classmates and friends. This is Sir Josh, signing off.